Hi on campus small groups, Pastor John here back again with another video. I just want to say I'm so glad to have met a lot of you and I'm so glad to see all of you coming out and I'm really excited about what we're going to see in about two weeks when we hopefully launch all of you as your own small groups. Now remember if you have not watched my video from last week you must watch it and I really do mean that you must watch this video. I'm going to link it somewhere somewhere around here. You'll see a link. If you see that link and you have not watched it, please, please watch it. It is an absolute must. I talk about the sensitive topic about opening up your home or your apartment so that the small group can meet. I know it's very sensitive, so that's why it's very important for you to watch that video. Last week, we talked about the myth, the lie, that your conscience is not something that you should be judging standards or it's not really the best thing to use when making decisions. Remember, the conscience is kind of something that we understand that reacts to certain situations and decisions. The myth the lie is that this idea that as long as my conscience is clear, as long as I'm not bothered by it, it must be okay. And that is a myth and a lie that we must stop executing, stop using as our standard. And I want to ask you a follow-up question. Are you evaluating your life? I want to ask you to please evaluate areas in your life where maybe you're just doing it because you're not bothered by it. You're not really feeling guilty. And as long as your conscience is clear, perhaps you're not thinking much about it. But what if something that you're doing is sinful or inappropriate or just not really a good idea? I ask you to please evaluate. Please apply what we're talking about in the on-campus small group because there might be some things that you're doing in life need some change and perhaps you never really thought about it because your conscience is clear. So evaluate your life. As we are approaching these two weeks and hopefully launching your small group, I know that many of you probably have so many excuses or reasons that will make it hard for you to continue on with a small group or even be part of the small group. Now, I guarantee you that all of us can list out excuses and reasons to not join or to not continue or to explain why small group is so difficult. And I guarantee you that list would be endless. I'm sure all of us can get together and write a list that gets to a thousand, ten thousand, never ending of excuses and reasons and explanations of why I can't make it on this night or go to small group or come back again. There are so many. You know, it's really odd that we have more excuses and reasons to stop us from doing something instead of pursuing something, especially when it comes to something from the scriptures or from church. Many of you have probably been thinking about some of these reasons or you have them right now. So I want to ask all of you to do this exercise for me. It has been proven time and time again that many of us learn through different ways. Maybe you like to learn through audibly or maybe you like to learn through visually. Whatever the case is, it has been proven that when you think about about something from different perspectives using your different senses, it stimulates the brain and you think about it in a different way because you're using a different perspective and you're using a different sense which helps you to learn about something or it helps you unpack the thought or the problem or the issue but definitely in a different way. And so many of you might be thinking about some of these excuses and reasons when you're sleeping or when you're driving but I want you to do this exercise and I want you to take out a sheet of paper and I want you to list out every single reason, every single excuse that you have about not being part of a small group or, or continuing on with a small group. Or maybe it's moving your schedule around to make the small group work. I want you to list it out and number them. One, two, three, four, however long it is. Some of your lists might be really long, like 30 or 40. You might even get to 100. I don't care how many reasons and excuses you have, write them all out and number them. Them. And here's step two of the exercise. After you're done with your list, what I want you to do is read each one out loud, but you do it like this. Number one, let's pretend your first excuse or your first reason of why being part of the small group is very difficult is I work a lot during the week. Some of you might have that same exact reason. So this is what you're going to do. Number one, you read it out loud. Number one, I work a lot during the week. The third thing I want you to do is after you say it and you say it out loud, please it's very, very important that you say it out loud because not only are we using this exercise for a visual sense, I want you to use it as a hearing sense as well 
to hear your own voice say this out loud. How powerful is this reason right now? You could ask the same question a different way. How controlling is this reason or this excuse right now? How powerful is I work too much or I'm working a lot? How powerful is that right now? How controlling is it over my life? I don't want you to move on to number two or the next reason until you answer that question. And whatever answer you choose, I want you to write it down. It's either number one, it's very powerful, it's very controlling, or it's number two, uh, it's a little bit powerful, it's a little bit controlling, or number three, it's not actually powerful at all, it's not controlling at all. Don't move on to the next reason or the next excuse until you answer that question. And I want you to do that for every single excuse and reason that you have. You see, we're trying to stimulate the brain through a visual, you see your excuse, you see your answers. We're also trying to stimulate the brain audibly. You're hearing your own voice say the excuse and you're hearing your own voice ask the question, how powerful is this? How controlling is this? And I guarantee you, you're gonna be thinking about it in a different way because you're using different senses to help open up and unpack a different perspective and you're gonna get an answer. It's either gonna be very powerful, very controlling, or it's gonna be a little bit powerful, a little bit controlling, or number three, it's not powerful at all. It, this doesn't control me at all. And I want you to write out, write out every single answer. Hopefully, this exercise is gonna help you really, really unpack whether these excuses and reasons are valid, or whether they're really, really that bad, or whether they're that controlling. The Holy Spirit is gonna illuminate truth to you. The Holy Spirit is gonna work with you during this exercise to help you reach a conclusion. I cannot determine that conclusion for you. That's between you and God. Even in the last video, I talked about opening up your house and your home, and I, I said, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I asked you to do a prayer exercise, and let's say most of you said like, you know, I don't wanna open up my house. That's that's between you and God. Even in this exercise, I don't know what's going to happen. You might list out 50 reasons and a lot of them you're going to answer very powerful, very powerful. Oh, it's very controlling. Yes, this has control over my life. In the end, you're going to say, you know what? Yeah, these are the reasons why I don't want to continue with a small group. That's between you and God. That is definitely not my hope or that is definitely not where I would like you to be. But I can't control that for you. I can't force you to do anything. But what I am asking you, what I am please, please begging you to do is to do this exercise and let's leave it up to God. Don't leave it up to the pastor. Don't leave it up to your friends. Leave it up to God. And I believe God is going to work through your heart with this exercise. I don't know what he's going to do, but I do know he's going to work. Where he might lead you in the end, who knows. I'm excited to see you all this week, week five. It's going to be a good Wednesday and I'm really hoping that all of you will continue to bond together and form that group, that small group of love and accountability. See you then. Bye.